there are five really important keys to understanding how to hit good drivers the majority of the time. I'm not gonna lie to you say every single time because if you play golf four, you'll know that that is not the case. Whether you're a beginner golfer or a scratch golfer, this is a really important video for you because I think it's gonna really help you get back to basics with some of the setup fundamentals, but also getting back in touch with where you should be during the golf swing. And let's be fair, the most important part of every golf swing is impact. We're gonna talk about that in this video too. I'm gonna to touch on grip to start with. Now, if you watched a lot of my videos, you know I'm an advocate, and probably hopefully, like most golf pros are as well, that we need a grip to be relatively neutral. And I say relatively because whether it's slightly strong or slightly weak, it's not the end of the world but when it's super weak or super strong, okay, it might not be the end of the world, but it's not gonna be great for your golf. One of the important aspects to hitting good tee shots is distance, speed. When you've got your hands into a position that for strong-handed golfers don't allow you to release because you'll hook it, you're now losing loads and loads of power. You're losing lots of flash speed through the golf ball. Flash speed can be a good and a bad thing in the golf swing. Obviously, it depends on your type of swing. But for me, I think it's a great thing because it's allowing me to move that club head faster. If your grip is in a position where you're not allowing it to move faster because it's going to hinder your direction, surely we have to change grip, okay? We don't want to be hanging onto the driver through the impact zone for dear life because we're not gonna be moving this very fast and therefore we're going to lose a lot of distance. So I would honestly ask you to check your grip. And what you're looking for here, for a right-handed golfer, left hand goes on. You're gonna put what I call the, the chubby bit of the left hand here on, to on the top of the grip. So that chubby bit there, you see where I've got a little bit of a marking. And by the way, if you've, got a, if you've got a really bad grip, this glove will not last more than a couple of rounds. I've had this glove for what feels like absolutely ages, actually. I barely even notice it's on. It's like another layer of skin. So very, very minimal wear and tear. The chubby bit of the hand goes on top. You can see the line between my index finger and my thumb pointing up towards the right side of my chest one two knuckles on that right hand, left hand my right hand comes in and the lifeline there that little line that goes right through the middle of your palm that is going to sit at one o'clock on your left thumb so it's not going to go down the middle it's going to go down the edge there one o'clock or two o'clock on your left thumb there and this is something that you can practice without a golf club notice straight away i've got two knuckles on my left hand the line between index finger and thumb points up through my right, the right side of my chest or up through the inside of my right forearm. And both of these lines are parallel to each other. So you don't need a, a golf club to practice this. My lifeline goes on that side of my thumb there. Okay, so the, I used to do this all the time. I used to walk around the house just doing that because I used to have a grip that went over there. Super weak, slicey high, spinny, good by distance, you're having none of it. So there we go, okay? So grip is absolutely vital for making sure that you're able to release this club. If you can get the grip into a neutral position, you're able to release the golf club. Hear that noise? That's the speed of the hands through impact. Strong grippers, the right hand's further under, if you released it, the club face would look like this, therefore pointing left, and you're gonna hit duck hooks. If you're a, a weak-handed golfer, you spend half your time just trying to get the club face back to square, and nine times out of 10, struggle to actually do so and hit a high spinny shot, as I said before. So a problem I used to have. So please, I would ask you, check your grip. It will make a huge difference to the in the distance that you can hit your tee shots. Next up, we're gonna be talking about posture. Posture again is really important. Grip controls the club face, posture controls your golf swing. Because we're also gonna be talking, the third tip on today is the swing arc. So if I'm able to get into a good posture, and you saw me at the start of this video, I often build my posture. 
tilt from the hips, slight bend of the knees, let the club drop. Now, distance from the ball with driver, obviously you're further away than what you would be with an iron, but your arm set will be slightly different. So I'd often say with the irons, I allow my arms to hang naturally from my shoulders. I put the golf club into there and I take my set up. With a driver, I'm gonna push them away an inch, just a little bit more, give myself a bit more space. More space for me to make my swings arc, more space to get more turn, more leverage, more width in my swing as well because if my arms are closer then the club's traveling slightly shorter so i've got a little bit of extra width in my swing and then posture is going to allow the encourage the shoulders to rotate around that spine angle if you set up too straight your shoulder rotation becomes very flat see how my shoulders are parallel to the ground i've seen this the, the most common one i actually see with driver is an exaggerated posture now this is really bad for those, for those trying to rotate at all because limited rotation and flexibility, unless you're super flexible in your vertebrae, which I can guarantee you I am not, you can't move. So from here, your backside is so far away from the ball, you're rotated and then you can't turn. So a lot of the times you can't finish your swing. So I would often just say, right, stand up straight, get shoulders back, push the hips back past your ankles, and past your heels, and then just, just sit a little bit, okay? Don't overemphasize the stretch in this lower back, just a, just a smooth push forward. Don't create, the, don't create the reverse C where you've got a curve in your back. Just, re, just let, the, let the hips just sit slightly underneath your pelvic bone. Then from here, you're able to create that much more easier turn. And then when I said about moving on to point three, with that rotation, we're able to create an arc. Now, what I see a lot of golfers doing, which is definitely incorrect, is trying to take the golf club back on a straight line. The golf swing is not built on straight lines. It's built on an arc, okay? So if you imagine, if I put the club in front of me there and I swing the club around my back, this is a circle around a straight spine angle. So if, I, if, you can, if you can visualize this circle, visualize the golf club making a red line around my body, okay? Now, tilt that red lined circle and my spine angle 45 degrees towards the ground, approximately, and create that circle again. And now, the circle is in, a, is in an arc around the body. So the initial movement away from the golf ball is going to be a slight, arc really really important this that we don't try and swing it on a straight line okay it's also really important because we move into the next point which is vital making sure you've got your shoulder turn finish your golf swing finish that back swing you've got a great posture you've got a good grip you've now started the swing on a nice arc make sure this lead shoulder gets into the middle of your chest okay middle of your feet underneath your chin as a result what you're going to find here is that the lower body creates this rotation rotation in the golf swing is key for power but it's also key for consistency because you're going to be using your bigger muscles to create the golf swing if you become all armsy the arms can go off in any way which shape or form they want to go off on and then you can't control it and you can't create the same move every time so everything that's gone before this rotational point has led you to be able to actually make it you've got to have the right grip posture and swing arc once we've got that rotation into the top of the back swing your reference point there as i mentioned before is, the, is your lead shoulder going under your chin your right hip having that rotation back towards the target the hips are around 45 degrees at this point shoulders around about 90 degrees at this point and my lower body, both feet are on the ground. Sometimes you might have to just lift that lead foot up for a little bit more leverage, a little bit more rotation. That's not an issue. It depends if you need to make that turn. If you need that left foot, to, that lead foot to come up as you rotate, that's absolutely fine as well. But what we don't want to see in rotation is slide. We don't want the body weight moving to the outside of the trail foot. I don't want to be too far away from that golf ball. I do not fancy my chances of getting back to that golf ball, okay? So we set up, we make this turn, and that's a powerful position. 
Now, the most important part of the golf swing is coming up right now, which is impact. Oh yes, please. Impact with the driver, we want to hit slightly up on the ball if we can. If you don't have much swing speed, you might find that actually hitting down on the golf ball creates a little bit of extra spin, keeps the ball up in the air for longer. So this part of the video really depends on your swing speed. The majority of times we always say, hit up on the golf ball, reduce the spin, that's great. If you don't have the speed, you do need the spin. So you do need to hit down on the ball a little bit. But as a general point of reference, I'm gonna tee the ball up approximately half of the golf ball. I would always clean the golf ball, dry and clean the golf ball before you absolutely send it. Half of the golf ball is gonna be the top of the driver. The low point of my golf swing is gonna be here, which is actually going to be in the center of my stance where all my other clubs are, certainly with my irons. So what I would do from here, I would slightly widen my feet, set into that posture that we just talked about, set the golf club into the middle of your stance. And this is a great drill for those that want to hit up on the golf ball, leave the driver there and hit from that position because you're automatically gonna be able to hit up onto the golf ball from there, all right? But what you're gonna do from here is you're gonna slide that golf club underneath the golf ball there. And as you do so, watch my shoulders just start to tilt back. I see too many golfers, and I'm playing in a program this week in Dubai, and one of my guys was kind of stood like this. He's watched YouTube videos, and he's exaggerated too many of the points, okay? So let me really emphasize this. You're moving a centimeter, an inch, two degrees. They're all slightly different numbers, but it's trying to say that it's minimal amounts, okay? So this shoulder, there. See how much it's moving? Hardly any, but what it's done, it's given me a bit of spine tilt. Because as I come into the golf ball, I'm gonna pressure into my left side, turn, 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 turn. Lower body's doing the turning. Upper body's bringing me in the direction. Because my lower body now has got in front of my upper body, my upper body is now tilted more at impact. If I started in this position and then created turn, look at my spine tilt now, we're in all sorts of trouble. Oh, I can't do it because of my back. So really important that we don't overemphasize that setup position because the impact position is all about that little bit of spine tilt, lower body's driving with that good grip position that we've got now as well. We're also releasing the golf club. So we've created power, we've created rotation, which is consistency around a good posture which gives you the opportunity to do so. We've got the understanding now of where you need to be as you're about to strike the golf ball. That was a bit healy. And therefore you've got all the tools that you need from this video to help you hit better, more consistent tee shots. Like I said, at the start, whether you're a beginner or a scratch golfer, just going over these points is absolutely vital for your consistency. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, share this video with your friends as well if you think it's gonna help them. And I'll see you next time.